I've tried to emphasize on this channel the importance of tradition for a civilization to maintain its moral standard and act as a unifying mythos that unites a people. In the Western world, what connects us to our ancestors and to our future descendants is the Christian tradition. However, it's no surprise to anybody that that seems to have been falling all around us in recent years. We've seen two major things undermine our tradition. First of all, it would be the so-called new atheists with their stinging moral invective and smart argument and the next thing would be the breakdown of meaning itself. Things like God, nation don't matter so much to modern people. There's lots of things out in the world to get lost in temptation, self-centeredness and so on and so on. So it seemed for a while that we might not need the church anymore and all these ancient ideas of tradition and balance and moral virtue. However, every time we move away from it, the world does tend to get a bit weirder. Wokeness is the obvious example here. However, you'd think in the face of this, the church would be making a soaring comeback. But in reality, it's actually not. Online, yes, many people are starting to recognize how we've lost something essential in our culture. However, if you actually go to a church, Many people will say it just feels a little bit soft and detached. And that's because it is soft and detached these days. On the one side, you might have the biblical literalists who don't really speak to the complexity of the modern world and the soulful depth modern men require. On the flip side to that, you'll have the liberal church. And if you go to listen to someone preaching at one of those, it's just like listening to somebody read The Guardian out loud. This is where people like this come from. This is a vicar who says, we're all Muslims. And then here's a gay vicar, I guess, celebrating being queer. Now, of course, this isn't really Christianity. It's actually just liberalism. They've taken some of the affectations of Christianity, but really it's just woke culture. But it begs the question, why isn't anybody standing up to this? Why has the church become so weak it doesn't know what to say? Well, I think there's a very simple answer to that. And that's because we've lost faith, not just in the church and Christianity, but masculinity itself. What I mean is, the Anglican Church especially is so eager to chase the world today and impress the BBC and The Guardian. And the mainstream culture does not like masculinity right now. The only time you hear them speak about masculinity is when it's led with the prefix toxic. And what this means is that the church is frightened to express its patriarchal heart. Love in the Christian tradition is something like an understanding between wisdom and justice, and on the flip side, compassion and empathy. Yet the modern world tends to like only the latter of these things, the softness, the compassion, the feminine qualities. However, when it comes to traditional masculine qualities like borders and discipline and duty, these things are seen as toxic and from a bygone era. Yet to be a healthy person in a healthy society, you need both of these poles to make you whole. Yet because traditional masculine qualities have been pathologized in the mainstream, what we're seeing is a society that doesn't see any positives in order and boundaries. Now I can understand there has been a toxic side to that in the past, but that doesn't mean it's toxic by nature. And what we're seeing right now in the Western world is many people have gleefully left that sense of discipline and devotion to something greater themselves into a world of self-centeredness and quote-unquote freedom. But eventually, people get tired of drinking all the alcohol they can, of having all the hookups they can possibly manage, and yearn for something deeper that offers balance in their lives. This is especially important for young men, and this is where the church has really failed. If a civilization doesn't focus on the formation of its young men, they never truly grow up and henceforth can't carry the tradition forward that their ancestors gave to them to pass it on to their descendants. If we take a look at the traditional biblical order of the family here, you'll see what I mean. This is the heart of Western culture and the structure our societies have followed. You have God at the top, he goes down to Christ, Christ goes over man, man is over woman and woman is over child. Now I can hear the feminists screeching at even the toxicity of such an idea. But what they don't understand, what the modern world don't understand, is this isn't some order of just meaningless power. This is an order of love. Ideally, if we're all aligned in that sense of truth and justice, doing our role dutifully, we create harmony in our own families and for the broader society. Further, I should add as an aside that most women in my experience actually like men who can lead. Leadership isn't about ordering somebody around, it's about sacrifice, honor, putting yourself forward and leading as a strong man. Now this demand of men is not easy. In fact, it's very hard. And this is why they need all the help they can get in forming into mature masculine figures. 
This means that men need help battling the demons of life, things such as lusts, anger, fear, craving for things that aren't good for you, egocentrism and so on. Yet in reality they get none of this. They're thrown out into a confusing world which doesn't know up from down anymore, doesn't know a man and a woman or even if they have differing traits. And what we're seeing across the Western world now is an epidemic of quote-unquote mental health issues. No wonder these young men and young women are just confused as to who they are. And the biggest issue of all is there's a great gaping hole of meaning. Nation isn't supposed to mean anything anymore. Your people isn't supposed to mean anything anymore. God doesn't mean anything anymore. Mythology doesn't mean anything anymore. All we're left with is an atheistic, secular and materialistic world. And sure, that world can be glitzy and exciting and entertaining at times, but it's not enough to sustain a civilization. This is why we're seeing lots of collapse around us in the Western world. But I look at that in a positive way. I think it's an opportunity for some rebirth to come down the line. What I mean is a renewed sense of meaning and mission in the world. The understanding that men aren't put here simply to add another naught at the end of your bank account, or more accurately, your boss's bank account. Nor are we here to live meaningless lives in which the only pleasure we get is short and passing on a Friday night. This is why at the heart of the modern chaos, I think there is an opportunity for something new to be born, something which focuses on personal meaning and personal health, social health and connection, as well as a spiritual battle which gives men great meaning throughout their lives. It's this impulse that will give the Western world a second life. If we don't have that, it really will just crumble and die. These are just my thoughts, however. Do let me know what you think down below and do consider subscribing to the channel.